Hello, Christ Temple, and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study with Pastor Kenneth Grizzard. We'd like to welcome you, those of you who are on YouTube for the first time. Thank you so much for joining us on this platform. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can get updates on whenever we post something new, something fun, something to keep you connected. There are three ways that you can continue to support the ministry through your giving. You can come by the sanctuary on Sundays from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. There will be a representative there to collect your offering. Or you can mail it to our secured mailing address, Post Office Box 60310, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29419. Or you can give virtually through your PayPal account, or from our webpage at thechristtemplechurch.org. There's also the Givelify app. You can download it on any smartphone. Locate Christ Temple Church, verify by the address, tap, give, and done. Finally, one brief announcement. On this Sunday, May 31st, you are welcome to join us in a drive-in church service at Christ Temple Church, 1309 Sumner Avenue in North Charleston, asking everyone to get there around 1015. You know, come as you are, but stay in your car. It is Pentecost Sunday. If you can, if you like, go ahead and wear white to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Now, let's join our Wednesday night Bible study series with Pastor Kenneth Grizzard. Blessed Trinity, already in progress. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us again for our Wednesday night Bible study. Um, let us begin with prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come tonight to say thank you. Thank you for your love. God, thank you for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you will just grant us with wisdom. Father, we pray that you will open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to be able to see you, hear you, and understand you. Uh, in a better way. Father, we pray that you will shake our consciousness, Lord, make us more aware of your presence, make us more aware of your person, make us more aware of your power. Father, we surrender this moment into your hands, and we say, speak as you will and design, and we give your name all honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So tonight we're going to finish uh, our Bible series the Blessed Trinity, talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so tonight we're going to focus on God the Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit. So um, the two things that we're going to really deal with tonight is uh, who is the Holy Spirit in regards to the power of the church, um, who is the Holy Spirit in regards to the comforter, the guide, the teacher of the church. So let's just do a little um, run through of what we've talked about the past couple of weeks, beginning with our focus scripture, as in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. So we see here, God created the heavens and the earth. His name here um, is uh, given to us as Elohim the God of the universe. Uh, we see uh, information here that this is the name that is attributed to God um, over 2,200 times in the Old Testament. This is the earliest form of his name written in the Old Testament. So then we go on to uh, the focus verse for um, God as the Son. That's John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and it says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, we see here that his name is Yeshua. He is the Lord, is salvation. So we look at God as Elohim, who is the creator of the universe, uh, he is the king of the world. And then we saw Yeshua, the Lord, is salvation, speaks about Jesus. And then we go into our focus scripture for the Holy Spirit, and we uh, go.
go back to where he was introduced to us. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. We see here there was a condition in play. The earth, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So we see here the Holy Spirit, Ruah, um, or Fuma. Uh, in the Greek, both meaning literally wind or breath. So let's talk about this briefly before we get into um, who is the Holy Spirit. The importance of this teaching is so um, uh, uh, vital for us as the children of God because our understanding of God is directly attached to our experience with him. So what we understand about him is what... Um, is, is, is what how we are uh, able to interact or experience him. Uh, and so it's key that we get understanding. The Bible says in all you're getting, get understanding. The key to that is because the more we understand, the greater our level of experience with God is. And so that is the key. So when we see here in Genesis 1 and 2, when it talks about the condition of the earth being without form, being void and in darkness. The Bible then says uh, the Spirit of God now hovers over the face of the deep. I just want to just talk about something really quick here. Um, the earth represents what we came out of because the Bible tells us that God took clay and he molded man. Okay? So, so God molded man. So the earth, when it was without form, void, and darkness, God sent the Spirit of God. He sent the Spirit of God, and it hovered over the face of the deep. So we understand that any time um, we need to be shaped, any time we need to be formed, and any time we need to be enlightened, it takes the Spirit of God. That is his job to form us, to shape us, and to enlighten us. This is his way. And so the Bible tells us that man became a living soul after God breathed his breath into him. So after God breathed the raw, his spirit into man, man became a living soul. So uh, the soul is dead apart from its connectivity to the spirit of God. Um, that's the reason why we can use the term dead man walking. Um, many of us were walking around, and that word dead means that we are not alive to the awareness of who we really are and who God really is. Um, and so we don't have that consciousness. We're walking around unconscious. So it is the Spirit of God that elevates our understanding of who God is and who we are really are. It's important that we understand um, that aspect here. Uh, so now when we begin to talk about who is the Holy Spirit, um, we begin to look at it here. In a Christian theology, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Um, this, uh, in the King James, it uses the term Holy Ghost. Uh, so the Hebrew and Greek words are both translated spirit. Um, so we just talked about this here. It means wind or breath, wind or breath. So, so therefore, breath and wind are symbols of the Holy Spirit. You find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, Job chapter 32 and verse 8, chapter 33 and 4, Ezekiel 37, verse 9 through 10, and John chapter 20, verse 22. Uh, the other symbols of the Holy Spirit have been attributed to the dove, that's in Matthew 3 and 6, or oil, that's in Luke 4 and 18, Acts 10 and 38, 1 John 2 and 20, um, fire for purification, that's Matthew 3 and 11, 
Uh, he has also been a symbol of living water. That is Isaiah 44, 3, and earnest or guaranteed of all that God has in store for us. The Holy Spirit is the earnest or guarantee of all that God has in store for us. So for us to truly receive all that God has in store for us, it comes through the Holy Spirit. So, so um, there are rich revelations of the Spirit of the Lord in the Old Testament. Running along the same lines as the New Testament. So, so first we noticed that the Spirit of God's agent in creation, that's what he is, the Spirit of He's the spirit of God's agent in creation, in creation. We find that Genesis 1 and 1, Psalms 33 and 6, uh, Psalms 104 and 30. Uh, he's uh, the creation even, he was present for the animals, for the human beings alike. So the Holy Spirit uh, is, the, is the change agent for creation. Everything that was created, the Holy Spirit was present. He is the breath in which we all have in our bodies. He's the reason why we exist. He is the very breath of God, the breath of God, the breath of God. It's what keeps us alive. The breath of God is what has activated us into becoming a living soul, a living soul. And I want to point something out when we say a living soul because it was at that point when you begin to do your research that the Bible says man received an appetite. An appetite means uh, a desire. Um, there is a, a, uh, a craving. And so the Holy Spirit, when he was breathed into man, gave man his nature uh, of understanding what it would be that would nourish him. So he had an appetite, a craving, a desire um, uh, to be in fellowship um, with God. That was a desire to walk with him, talk with him, uh, be with him. That was just uh, instinctively in him. It was what nourished him in that regards. Um, so here it is, here it is. So second, the spirit is the agent of the provincial work of God in the moral sphere, uh, the areas of history and ethical relationships. So we see the spirit of God is the agent of God's providential work okay uh, of the moral sphere that's according to ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14 the spirit is the power by which the sovereign god controls the complexities of life on earth so uh, we see that in isaiah 4 and 4 the godly person knows that his sin offends the holy one and he fears quenching the spirit Psalms 51 and 11. Remember David declared, he said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. This is the form that the Lord's judgment on disobedient, looking at Saul, took. That's 1 Samuel verses 16, uh, chapter 16 and 14. Third, the Spirit is known in the Old Testament as a personal endowment. He indwells the people of God as a whole, Haggai 2 and 5, just as he was among them at Exodus, Isaiah 63 and 11. He endowed um, certain ones for uh, special skills. Remember when God uh, began, gave Moses uh, the uh, plan for the tabernacle and the tapestry and things to build and he spirit his spirit he released his spirit on those who had special skills to accomplish this task um, many others the spirit god of, of god came for mighty deeds um, god even clothed himself gideon clothed himself with the spirit of god um, those references correspond with the New Testament as the New Testament speaks um, as regard of the filling of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. Uh, that is a special endowment for a special task. So forth, the Spirit inspired the prophets. So the prophets wrote as the Spirit of God spoke unto them. Uh, so in all of these references, Numbers um, 11 and 29, 1 Samuel 10 and 6, 2 Samuel 23 and 2, 1 Kings 22, Nehemiah, Hosea, Joel, Micah, Zechariah, all of these references, they reference the personality of the Spirit is notable. So the Holy Spirit inspires uh, the very Word of God. 
He is the inspiration for the word of God. He speaks and the prophet and the great men of the Bible wrote as the spirit of God gave utterance. Moreover, we talk about who the Holy Spirit is. It's important for us to understand that the spirit of God is wise. He is vexed by sin and rebellion. And he is at rest when sin has been dealt with. He is holy. He is holy and good. We note this. Um, we note that this is the same sort of evidence that we uh, would be adduced from uh, the New Testament for holding the Spirit of God. Uh, God is a God. The Spirit of God is a He and not an It. So it's in, it's it's incumbent upon us to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person and not a thing. Amen. So, but like in the New Testament, the Old Testament goes further. Psalms chapter 139 and 7 shows that the Spirit is the very presence of God himself. So the Holy Spirit is God in the third person. Three persons, three persons. What does that mean? He is God himself in all the world. The Spirit of God is God himself actually presents and uh, in operation in presence and in operation in Isaiah 63 and 10 um, when the people vex the spirit God becomes their enemy in Isaiah 63 and 14 the work of the spirit giving rest is parallel to the act of God leading his people uh, the ascription of holiness uh, in Psalms 51 and 13, accords to the spirit, the character, and personality of God. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is the very presence of God. He is the very presence of God himself. Uh, and so we see uh, that the Holy Spirit is God himself. Amen. Um, as we begin to Let's continue this. And just stay with us just for a few more minutes, and we're going to continue to uh, get into the Holy Spirit as the power of the church, counselor, guide, and teacher. Uh, just laying a little foundation here. The Holy Spirit, uh, the fact that the Holy Spirit has power and influence is plain um, from Acts chapter 1 and 8, uh, that he is a person, and the New Testament makes clear, makes this clear in detail. He the Holy Spirit as a person is with us. That's John chapter 14 and 17. He teaches and brings to remembrance. The Holy Spirit bears witness. He convinces us of sin. He guides, speaks, and declares. He inspires the scripture and speaks through them. The Holy Spirit inspires the scripture and he speaks through them. He speaks to his servants he calls ministers, he sends out workers, and he forbids certain actions and intercedes. This is important that we understand the functionality of the Holy Spirit. He does more than uh, what some of us attribute to him as far as making us shout and speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit helps us to live right. Uh, this is the, the reason why we need to understand him. Uh, because he's more than just a quickening. He's more than just a quiver. He's more than just um, a, a feeling that you get. Here's the thing. The Holy Spirit can cause you to feel, but he's not a feeling. He is a person. Glory to God. He has characteristics. Amen. So let's talk about those characteristics. He has uh, the attributes of personality. Uh, he is love. He has a mind. Uh, thought, knowledge, and words. The Holy Spirit can be treated, and get this now, in certain respects as many treat a human person. What do you mean by that? The Holy Spirit can be lied to and tempted. That's Acts chapter 5, verses 3 through 4 and 9. I would advise against doing that, though. He can be resisted. That's in Acts chapter 7, verse 51. He can be grieved. That's Ephesians chapter 4 and 30. And he can even be insulted and blasphemed against. Matthew 12 and 31. So the Holy Spirit can uh, certainly be um, uh, offended by sin. The Holy Spirit is God. Uh, equated with the Father and the Son. Matthew 28, one, uh, verse 19 
2 Corinthians 13 and 14, Jesus speaks to him as of his other self. That's in John chapter 14. Uh, he says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you another comforter um, whose presence with the disciples will be greater and a greater advantage than his own. Remember when Jesus said to them, um, it's, it's good for me to go away um, because if I don't leave, the comforter will not come. Uh, Jesus says, greater works shall you accomplish. See, as long as Jesus was present on the earth, uh, the disciples could uh, accomplish only those things when he was present with them when he was in that region but as soon as he went to the father the holy spirit was released not just to one man but to anyone that would believe and so they were able to accomplish a greater volume of work uh, because of the disbursement of the spirit of god through belief uh, so he said to them, his, the advantage would be uh, that he would leave and the Holy Spirit would come. To have the Spirit of God is to have Christ. God is spirit in his, in his central nature and sends his Holy Spirit to live and work in people. So when we begin to talk about the Holy Spirit um, as being the power of the church, let's look at Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 8. This is very important as we are in, uh, coming up to the celebration of Pentecost um, and, and uh, understanding the importance of it. The same way we celebrate the resurrection uh, the resurrection of Christ as our Lord and Savior um, being able to save us and deliver us. Christ started um, what the Holy Spirit would take up and complete. What do you mean by that? Christ delivered us from sin, but the Holy Ghost is the one that keeps us uh, and preserves us um, from living in sin. He gives us the power uh, to be able to live a life of discipline and holiness. We cannot do it apart from the Holy Ghost. That is the key that a lot of people miss. Um, they, 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 they believe that church is a good ideal or, or God is a good concept, but what a lot of people fail to realize is that to live a successful Christian life, live a successful life that models Christ uh, requires the same spirit that was within Jesus that is the same spirit we need activated in us, conscious in our minds, in order to live this life successfully. So Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8 says, uh, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, the Bible says in verse number 4, Acts chapter 1, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. I uh, just want to draw something to your attention. Remember um, when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and asked him how how he could be able to inherit the kingdom of God. And, and Jesus said to him, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, how can a man who is old return to the womb? How can he be born again? And Jesus says, no, you must be born again of the spirit and of the water. Because if you are not born again, you will not be able to see the kingdom of God. Jesus here is talking about being born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being uh, in, endowed into our lives and able for us to be able to interact uh, in the kingdom of God, understand the kingdom of God, live in the kingdom of God. Um, uh, 
resemble the kingdom of God. It is the Holy Spirit. Remember we said in the very beginning that forms us is the very Holy Spirit that shapes us. It is the Holy Spirit that enlightens us. That is key that we understand that because we cannot begin to rely on our own intellect. We cannot begin to rely on our own wisdom. We cannot even begin to rely on our own research. We need the Holy Spirit because it is his job to lead us guide us and direct us into all truth and truth is key because we can be led into many things and none of them have to be true it is the holy spirit of god that leads us into what is true verse six says still chapter one acts chapter one verse six and it says therefore when they had come together this is jesus talking to them they asked him saying lord Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Now we see that Jesus had been talking to them and teaching them concerning the kingdom. Uh, so see that word restore? Restore. That word re is a prefix. Um, we're going to see it again. We're going to see it again. Verse 7, verse 7. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. <clears throat> but you shall, the Bible says, receive power. Now, I just want to stop real quickly. Um, there was something here um, during my study. Uh, Dr. Miles Monroe said, he pointed out, and it just changed my whole thought about this scripture. Uh, when he, he brought out the prefix re, R-E, Anytime you see that word, that word, it, it, it's an old um, translation. In the Latin, it means to give back, give back, give back, um, to um, go back to. Anytime you see the word re in front of something, it means to go back to. Um, so um, when you think about repent, it means to turn back, turn away from what you were doing, go back to. Uh, the right way. Re, re means go back, and that word seed, it means to possess. So when it says receive, it says, what it literally means is receive again power. So, so let's just stop real quick and understand this. So in the beginning, when God created man, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, he said, let us make man our own image. He, in all three fashions, in all three persons, was present with man. When man sinned, watch this now, and lost the kingdom, what man lost was this power to understand, comprehend, the consciousness of God. So he lost this ability. So when the Holy Ghost came, it was to restore what Adam lost, the power to understand God, the power to understand our own selves, the power to walk in dominion authority, the power to speak to our environment and our atmosphere. Watch this now with consciousness and awareness. Um, glory to God. Why, why is that the key? Um, because James said many of us when we pray, we have not because we ask not. And then when we do ask, we ask a miss. We are not aware. We are not conscious of the mind, presence, and will of God. And so when we don't receive something according to our request, uh, we become discouraged and upset only because we didn't understand whether or not it was attributed to the will of God or to the desire of our flesh. So it is the power of God that connects us. It is the Holy Spirit that connects us to the mind, thought, and will of God. Amen. That is key. So he says, but you shall receive power. This is why it's so impo important for us to understand what happened at Pentecost. Pentecost represented 
the birthing of the New Testament church. It represented uh, the power of God, uh, the same power that was in Eden back on earth again in God's representatives. He says, but ye shall receive power. How? When the Holy Spirit has come up on you. We don't receive this power until we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now let's go ahead and look and see what happens when the Holy Spirit came. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I just want to show you something. Can I just show you something here? Uh, it, it was attributed that it was about um, 10, 10 days or so um, when Jesus left the earth until Pentecost had fully come. Now understand, the Holy Ghost didn't come until this moment, which was 10 days after Jesus left. What did the disciples do? between those 10 to 15 days. The Bible says they were in prayer. Can I just say something to you? I just want to show you something the Lord showed me. Uh, this 10 days, the two-week period in which they were waiting, it reminded me of the journey it, it really took for the children of Israel to leave bondage and reach the promised land. You know, that was really only a, a 10 to 14-day journey that they turned into 40 years because of disobedience. It, it seems like uh, we were getting this second chance. Glory to God. I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And the Bible says, suddenly there came a sound. And here's the key we got to understand. The sound came from heaven. It came from God. God's atmosphere uh, as of a rushing mighty wind. Remember the Spirit of God is attributed to wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And each is one set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Let's talk about this power in which they were filled with. So this power, this power in which they were filled with is defined as the dudamus power. This is power, uh, the miraculous power, might and strength. As we begin to look at the definition, uh, this is the ability to perform. Uh, for the believer, this is power to achieve by applying the Lord's inherent abilities, those inborn abilities. See, when you're born again, there are abilities that come with your birth, your new birth. Power through God's ability. This is delegated power that comes from God himself to accomplish the task in which we were created and designed for. This power comes through God's ability. Um, dunamis, dunamis. It is needed in every scene of life to really grow in sanctification and prepare for heaven or glorification. Uh, this is a very important term. Uh, Deuteronomy's power. This is the power that was given to the believers when they believed on Christ, uh, when they waited in prayer. God filled them with his power to accomplish what it was they were created and designed for. That is key. That is key. We're going to get to that in just a minute. So let's talk about the Holy Spirit as the comforter, the guide, and the teacher of the church. So the Spirit has many functions or roles and activities. First, he does a work in the hearts of all God's people. Uh, Jesus told the disciples that he would send the Spirit into the world to convict the world uh, of guilt in regards to sin and righteousness and judgment. The Holy Ghost convicts us. This is key that we understand this because many folks run around and holler about they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't ever live a life of conviction. It don't seem like nothing ever, uh, ever puts them in a place of discipline or submission to God. Everyone has a God consciousness. This 
is key uh, because the Bible says to every man, God has given a measure of faith. Faith, we understand, is God's consciousness revealed in man. It is that measure, glory to God, that gives us the ability to recognize when God is calling us. Uh, so whether or not they admit it or not, everybody has a God consciousness. Um, uh, sometimes we're just unconscious uh, until the Spirit of God wakes us up. It is the Spirit that applies truth of God to the minds of men to convince them by fair and sufficient arguments that they are sinners. It is God through the Holy Spirit that reveals to us our need of him. This is important. Responding to that conviction brings men to salvation. Uh, once we are saved and belong to God, the Spirit takes up residence in our hearts, uh, forever sealing us with the confirming, certifying, and assuring pledge of our eternal state as his children. Jesus said he would send the Spirit to us to be our helper, our comforter, and our guide. Um, he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor or comforter to be with you forever. That is John chapter 14, verse 16. The Greek word here translated for counselor means one who comes alongside uh, as the ideal of someone who encourages or exhorts. The Holy Spirit takes up permanent residence in the hearts of the believers. That's Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 9, and 1 Corinthians 6, chap, um, chapter, chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, uh, chapter 12 and 13. Jesus gave the Spirit as compensation for his absence. Look at that. To perform the functions toward us which he would have done if he had remained personally with us. So here it is. Among those functions is that as the revealer of truth, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. The Spirit's presence within us enables us to understand. The Spirit of God enables us to understand and interpret God's Word. It is important that before we ever pick up the Bible that we pray and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance to give us revelation and understanding so that we don't try to understand it in our own wisdom. Jesus told his disciples that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. John 16 and verse 13. He reveals to our minds the whole counsel of God as it relates to worship, doctrine, and living. Uh, he is the ultimate guide going before, leading the way, removing obstructions, opening the understanding, and making all things plain and clear. He leads in the way we should go uh, in all spiritual things. Now, without such a guide, we would be, uh, we would be apt uh, to fall into error. A crucial part of the truth he reveals is that Jesus is who he says he is. John 15, 26, 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. The Spirit convinces us of Christ's deity and his incarnation. He, his being the Messiah, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension. It is through the Holy Spirit in which we are able uh, to even understand that his exaltation to the right hand of God and his role as our judge of all. He gives glory to Christ in all things. That is John chapter 16 and verse 14. Now the other functions of the Holy Spirit are such. Uh, another one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is that he is the gift giver. 1 Corinthians 12 describes the spiritual gifts given to believers in order that we may function as the body of Christ on earth. All these gifts, both great and small, are given by the Spirit so that we may be his ambassadors to the world, showing forth his grace and glorifying him. 
the spirit also functions as fruit producer in our lives. Um, when he indwells us, he begins the work of harvesting his fruit in our lives. His fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. These are not works of the flesh, which is incapable of of producing such fruit, but they are, pro they are products of the Spirit's presence in our life. If we have the Holy Spirit, these fruits ought to be our attributes. So, so here it is, here it is, here, here it is, we talk about who the Holy Spirit is. Here's the thing we have to understand. We cannot fulfill purpose apart from the Holy Spirit. We cannot fulfill purpose apart from the Holy Spirit. What is our purpose? The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 28, he says, let us make man in our image and let them have dominion. It is our purpose to have dominion over this territory and which God created for us to live in. It is our purpose to be blessed. It is our purpose to be fruitful and multiply. Now, in order for us to be fulfilled, fulfilled in order for us to be fulfilled the holy spirit must be activated in our lives now is it possible for us to be saved and not led by the holy spirit absolutely the book of acts said um when the apostles came up on some of john the baptist's disciples he they, he spoke to them and and said have you received the holy ghost since you believed and they said we've not even heard of such a Holy Ghost. So, so, so they did believe, uh, but they had not received the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit, they had not received that power. So, so the Holy Spirit comes for us to not just be saved, but for us to possess uh, the power to have dominion in this life. The Holy Spirit comes for us to be able to understand the culture of heaven and to emulate the characteristics of our Father. We cannot accomplish that apart from his power, which is in his spirit. Uh, so look at this. The Holy Spirit is the manifested intention of Christ Jesus. Let's talk about the Father, the Son, and then let's stay here on the Holy Spirit. God, when he, um, uh, in the beginning, he gave unto his people a set of laws. Those laws showed us um, our um, uh, need for him. That's what those laws did. They showed us our need for him. Uh, and so he sent Christ to fulfill our need for him. Christ said, I did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. So, so the laws showed us our need for him. Christ came and fulfilled the need. And then the Holy Spirit came as the manifested intention of Christ Jesus. Uh, and so what was that? Uh, look at John chapter 14 and 6. And it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's understand what this means. No one comes to the Father. What did Jesus do? Jesus came and through his death, burial, and resurrection, gave us forgiveness of sin, he gave us access to the forgiveness of sin, which God is the forgiver of our sin. Jesus brings us to the Father as our big brother, glory to God, and he, he, he begins to tell the Father, for this one I suffered, bled, and died. Forgive, forgive, forgive. His blood covers us, and it gives us forgiveness. And so the Holy Spirit is what leads us to Christ Jesus, who leads us to the Father so that we can have a relationship with him. In truth, the Holy Spirit is what all men seek. The Holy Spirit is what all men seek. If the Holy Spirit is the power for us to fulfill destiny, if the Holy Spirit is the power for us to fulfill purpose, every single person on this earth is looking to fulfill purpose. And that is only when we receive the Holy Spirit in fullness. Look at John 6 and 44. 
He says, no one can come to me talking about Jesus unless the Father who sent me draws him. How does the Father draw us? Through the Holy Spirit. And I will raise him up in the last days. Every single person on this earth is looking for that thing that is missing. The Bible says that after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. In other words, you will get the power back that you lost in the beginning. What you lost in the garden, you will receive when the Holy Ghost comes, when the Holy Ghost fulfills you. So what we are commemorating right now on Pentecost is us getting the power back to understand the kingdom of God, getting the power back to to understand our role as the children of God, to understand God as our Father, to understand the importance of our relationship with Him. So look at this, look at this, look at this. So when, when, when every single person on this earth is looking for that connection, that connection to why they are here, uh, what it is they're supposed to do while they are here, and it is that power that brings us to understand why we were created. I want you to think about something. Have you ever put a puzzle together and and you, you, you're almost done and you're missing one piece? And you're looking everywhere and you can almost see the complete picture except there's a piece missing. And you look all over the place. You look under the couch, look under the table. You, know, you look in the empty box and you're saying, where is this piece to this puzzle? Well, see, this is what happens. Many of us try to fill that piece of the puzzle with whatever we can find. Sometimes we try to fill that piece with alcohol. Sometimes we try to fill that missing piece with other people. Sometimes we try to fill that missing piece with uh, cigarettes or, or marijuana or narcotics or pills or, or work uh, or, or children or spouses we try to fill that missing area that missing piece with so many other things and the only thing that's going to fill it is what with, is with what fits and that is the holy spirit we are right now you got to think about this when 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 man fell the totality of who we were became fragmented and we were we went out in the world searching for that security that we lost. But Jesus came to restore that. And he restored it through giving us the Holy Spirit, which leads us and guides us and directs us into all truth. So I pray, I pray, I pray that when Pentecost comes, when we begin to commemorate this weekend, I want you to have the mind of gratitude and appreciation for the presence of the Spirit of God in your own life. And if by chance you are saved and you have never asked the Holy Spirit uh, to fill you, you've never asked him to uh, endow you with his presence, I want you to begin to pray even now. Lord, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your spirit. I want to explain something to you. There is a theology that I believe um, just needs a little upgrade to it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say it's, it's an error, but it just needs a little upgrade. The Holy Spirit does more than make you speak in tongues. It's the Holy Spirit that helps you to live right. You got a lot of folks who speak in tongues and swear they got the Holy Ghost, but they ain't living worth two cents. The Holy Ghost helps you to live right. Glory to God. He empowers you to understand your value. Glory to the Lamb of God. He empowers you to understand that you are more than your urges, more than your senses. You are more. There is something on the inside of you. Glory to God that is worth more than a few thrills. So the Holy Ghost helps us to live right. The Holy Ghost helps us to understand God better. And the Holy Ghost helps us to treat each other correct. You want to know whether or not you got the Holy Ghost? How you living? How you living? How are you living? And so if you're, you've never really asked 
the Holy Ghost to fill you, I want you just to begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit just to fill your heart and fill your mind. Glory to God. And when you do that, I guarantee you, he'll shape you, he'll form you, and he will enlighten you. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we receive conversion, when we receive Christ as our Savior, we don't know within ourselves how to walk upright. It is the Holy Spirit that teaches us that. We don't know within ourselves how, how not to uh, be offensive to God. It is the Holy Spirit who teaches us that. This is why we need him activated in our hearts and activated in our consciousness. This is the reason why we need him so that our awareness can be activated so that we can glorify our father in the way in which we were created to. My prayer for you is that the Holy Spirit will just endow you this week that even if you've been filled, that he'll just refill you. Glory to God. Even right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, wherever you may be, in your car, in your home, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, glory to the risen Savior, that right now, by the power of your spirit, Lord, you will send a fresh wind right now to those, your people. Father, every person that's listening, oh God, to this sermon, to this message, this teaching, Right now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for a fresh filling of your power, a fresh endowment of your presence. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that your peace and your love, your counsel and your wisdom, glory to God right now, begin to overshadow your people. Father, secure and sure them up on every side right now in the name of Jesus. Father, let your spirit come. Glory to the Lamb of God. Let your spirit fall right now in the name of Jesus. Those who got uplifted hands, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Those, Lord, who are laying down because they can't even sit up. Father, ask you right now, fill them on the inward man. Father, let them experience your glory. Father, even right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, let that well begin to spring up on the inside of them. Glory to the Lamb of God and fill them now, God. Fill them to the overflow. God, fill them to the cup run over. God, fill them, Father, to their hands get the waving. Fill them to their feet get the moving. Father, fill them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, until their tongue begins to roll. God, fill them right now, God, until they know they are delivered live it for real. Oh God, fill them right now in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Father, I thank you now for the presence of your Holy Spirit. God, I bless you right now for the tangibleness of your anointing. God, I give you glory, I give you honor, and I give you praise. God, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor you. Hallelujah, Lord God, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making us more aware. Thank you, God, for elevating our consciousness. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. You said it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. And God, I thank you hallelujah that right now oh God your Holy Spirit is shaping us he's forming us glory to God as the old folks would say the things I used to do glory to God I just don't do them anymore places I used to go I don't go anymore because the power of God has changed my appetite the power of God has reformed my mind the power of God glory 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 God I thank you for your power and I I thank you for your spirit. Touch now those your people. Father, touch now everything that is associated with them. Oh God, we decree and declare your peace and your joy among and upon your people. Right now in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I pray that the presence of God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, is just all over that room all in that house, all in that car. Glory to God just assuring you that he is with you, that he is your present help in the time of trouble. Join us this Sunday. Yes, this Sunday right here at 1030. And God bless you. We'll see you then. Take care.